Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and this is COP4709 Applied Database 2. Uh, this is a, a small lecture on getting started with the SQL Server Report Builder. This is to uh, help with the assignments that deal with dealing with the Report Builder. There have been some questions of how to get started. Well, the first thing that you're going to do to get started is you're going to go ahead and install Report Builder. I've installed Report Builder 3. I've also made sure that I have on my machine all the prerequisite stuff that you need to run pre uh, Report Builder 3, which is the ASP.NET Framework. Uh, when I start up Report Builder after the installation, I have the getting started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take you through a report that I'm going to create using one of our data sets here, and I'm going to do a new report. So I'm going to actually do uh, use the table of matrix wizard. It's a nice little wizard. It makes it really easy to do, and um, just run through this. Um, I haven't made anything yet. So I haven't created any data sets. I don't have any data sets to work with. So I am going to have to create one. So um, now as I'm working through this, I don't have any data source connections. I don't have any data sets. I need to create everything. So again, I'm going to click new. Now here I'm going to have uh, I'm going to call this data source data source A6-1. Um, so this is me, the first data set that I'm going to use for assignment six. I'm not going to use the data data that you're going to use. For this, uh, I'm going to do a little sample here with one of the other assignments so that you can actually see how to do this. But I need to create all the pieces to go with this. Now, a data source is the data that's going to be used in the report. And the reports, um, in a report builder, it can use multiple data sources. So in this case, the data is coming from Microsoft SQL Server. Um, I have Microsoft SQL Server installed. I've been doing a lot of stuff with it. But this could be other sources. You can use spreadsheets. You can use SQL Server Express. You can use Access Databases. The data can come from all over. But the system's got to know where you're going to be getting this data from. So I have to create this connection. So I'm going to hit click on Build to build it. Um, I have multiple servers running on. I have multiple machines in my office. I've got multiple machines running. So this will take a second to pull up. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the data from the source that I that that I know where it is. Um, in this case, my SQL Server my SQL Server connection that I have the data in is this one. Notice I had a whole bunch of those in this drop down. Now you might not have a whole lot if you're only running locally with one instance of SQL Server, but if you've got Visual Studio installed and SQL Server installed, you're probably running SQL Express and SQL Server. So these are the instances of all the databases it can get to. Um, I use Windows and Thought authentication here. When that happening, I should have access to everything here. I'm going to pull information from the database, which is this assignment one database that I created. If you notice that <coughs> this is working right and you authenticated correctly into the database, you should see a list of the databases that are that are there. Um, I could hit test connection, but that works just fine. Okay, now I've got that connection there. I could actually filter the connection even further if I wanted to with, with different types of functions. I'm just going to take the data raw. Um, that's going to be able to, to see access everything that's in that database. Um, whoops, I need to have, it doesn't like my name. All right, I'll make that an underscore. Should like the name now. Okay, so now I actually have a data connection. This is a connection that I'll be able to use for this report. Um, it, what I've done is I've specified where I'm getting the data from and what database, and it, this is all called a data a source. Now, this actually creates a string, an actual uh, textual string that describes all this, and you could have entered that string directly too that, that was in the last screen. Connection looks good. We're going to move on. Now, in this case, I'm going to have to put together a query, and this query is just simply what am I going to select from the, from the data source? This should look fairly familiar. This uh, you did this. I have a table here with countries and continents. I have a table here with financial aid given to those. I'm going to use both of those tables here. Um, I do need a relationship between the two tables here. Um, the relationship that I want to have here, um, I want to. I got a left table. I don't have. I'm going to connect it to this. I'm going to connect to a right table here. So first. Don't detect anything here. I'm going to create one by clicking that. The left table in this case is going to be countries and continents. The right table is going to be financial aid. Okay, I need. I want to change the fields. Notice I have no fields here, so I have to click this little guy to make the fields. The country, 
connects with the country name. You might remember back that when we were making those tables and we had the countries and continents table and we had the financial aid table and we pulled the information from one to the other, this is where those two tables join. So I'm looking to see where those are actually equal there. This is nothing more than actually joining into a query. So I'm going to be using countries and continents and financial aid. The where condition will be where country equals country name. So I'm just simply doing that. Um, the join type, I really can actually do a full outer join. I can, I can pull everything from both of those. Um, it won't make any difference in this type of query. Um, so, you know, kind of interesting stuff here. I'm not going to filter this at all. I'm going to move on to the next one. Now, I'm creating a table. In this case, I'm creating a table here. So I have to decide what I want where in the table. What I really want to see is by continent in the columns. And, oh, you know what? I do need to do something else back here. I want to see the sum of this amount, so I need to actually make this an aggregation. I want to know the total amount of, of stuff here. And I'm not going to do this by fiscal year. I'm just going to do totals. I could actually have it grouped by fiscal year. I could have it filtered by fiscal year. I'm just going to have the total of everything in the database. Um, I, yeah, that's, that's why I'll do this. Uh, now, I could go back out here and, and have this, do, do other stuff with this, but this is going to be good for you to play with. So what I've done now is I'm going to create a table here. I'm going to go forward one. I made this now an aggregation of a sum. Okay, now when I come here, I want to see the continents in the columns. I want to see the program in the rows, and I want to see the sum of all of that. So now I've very quickly and easily created this table where I've got continent by program name, Okay, and when I come over to the next, it should give me everything here. Now I've actually set this so it shows subtotals and grand totals. What that means is you're going to have a total final row, final column will be totals. If I took that off, I could actually change that so it could be, you know, I have subtotal below where I have only those pieces, but I'm going to show everything here. Okay, now I've got a layout. I can pick out my get a nice little color here, make it green since it's a green report. And now I've got the report. Now, um, in this case, I can actually run the report. When I run the report, okay, here's my continents. Here's my little guys right here, my program names that I had for each of those in my report. Okay, remember all those different types of reports? Here's the totals on the edge. Here's the totals by continents. Okay, I can go back to design mode. Now I can do things in here like I can I can decide that I want um, this to be all sorts. Of, well, I I can convert it to text. I can also change the formatting. Like I may want this to be uh, numeric. I can change them to be dollar. So I don't want the I don't want the, the default. I want currency. Make this one currency. I'm just showing two different ways to do this. Currency. I can now hit run again. Okay, now it actually shows it as dollars. And you can see that like for the Asia, for child and survival and health, $2.09 billion and a total of $12 billion over the entire database. There you go. Now, as you recall, we had to do this exact same report way back when, when we did the uh, did the, the project where we actually had to pull this information. I've now developed in the span of less than f 10 minutes a full-fledged, very nice, pretty report, which I can, of course, even make, you know, do other things with, uh, essentially the same type of information very rapidly from that data. So um, should be a little bit useful. This should also kind of get you started with using the report builder. Here are some pieces of advice. First, if you're creating a report, sit down with a piece of paper and figure out what you want the report to look like. Don't just jump in and start building the reports. I can do all sorts of stuff here, like um, you know, I, I've got this wonderful capability of saying, here this is amount of foreign aid by continent and program 
Okay, running it, see that nice and pretty. I could actually change it, the layout here a little bit more too. Go back to design mode. As you can see, there's a lot of things you can do. Now, feel free to go in there, get the report builder running. You now see how to connect the databases. Go in there and start playing with it with some data. Go look at some of the other databases you have and start working with it. This is not really as hard as it seems to be when you first get started. And how do I get running? It's really not that, that challenging. Um, you can see that you can create really great reports really fast with using these tools. Hopefully this is helping you out quite a bit. And uh, good luck. Good programming. Thanks.